We are in the final lap of go time, implementing the router VLAN changes. By the time we're done here, we will implement the VLAN changes for the router on the stick powering the VIA office. Now, if you haven't seen the other two nuggets it, that is implementing the configuration on the switches, the wireless access points, the voice over IP phones, you want to check those out or this one won't make much sense. It'll, or at least it'll seem strangely disconnected from the rest. Um, we're in the final leg of this implementation. I got here at 8. 30 at night. It is now 1120 at night. Uh, coffee's starting to fade. I'm feeling it a little bit um, and I'm hoping this goes quick and brings everything back online. So where we're at right now is we've implemented our pre-configurations on all the switches in the office. It didn't go as smoothly, smoothly as I would have hoped, but definitely not as badly as it could, uh, simply because I failed to, to count into the fact that we were changing native VLAN from uh, 10 to 777, so I was losing access to switches as I was going. It's a little nerve-wracking. I didn't want to leave my office, get console cables. They would cost hours to, to get into each one of those switches. So the good news is we got all the native VLANs matched up, everything came back online, and life is good. We've got these configured, we've got the WAPs configured with the new VLANs, but no internet access can be had outside of the management VLAN 10 because this router on the stick doesn't have the VLAN interfaces for all those. We need to implement those and move the IP addresses over. Now, Keep in mind, if you were following the series up till now, we designed the new subnetting scheme, but I am not implementing that subnetting scheme tonight. It's 11.21 right now. It's getting later, and changing IP addresses is not something you want to start at 11.21. That's a second phase, and actually has nothing really to do with the VLANs. Uh, that's just pain and suffering and a lot of hard work going to all the printers and anything with the static IP. It's, it's not fun. It's going to be necessary, but um, that's that's where we're at right now. So let's get into that router. Now that router, the great news is I'm using a Ubiquiti router for that, which is completely web managed. Okay, so you can see the configuration of this um, this uh, this router as it stands right now. Uh, Ethernet three is the interface that we have connected to the inside network. Now you can see that thing is dropping a massive amount of packets because right now we're misconfigured and everything's going haywire, right? And that's fine because we expected that. These are the old VLANs, VLAN 100. You can see 3.100, 3.101, 3.10. That one is the only one that works right now. And you can see that from the send and receive rates that are happening happening on there. That's our management VLAN. And that one's going to stay. We'll probably just rename it from data. Uh, development, that's our VLAN 40. That'll become the managed devices. So, so you can see there's some that are configured correctly. Actually, that's not configured correctly at all. I think that was <laughs> that was development, something somebody put in there. The imaging VLAN is what will become VLAN 40. So, so here's here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add in the interfaces that are needed one by one, give them with the correct VLAN association, and then move the IP addresses from the old ones onto the new. Again, we're not after an IP address change here. We're just updating the VLANs. So here we go. I'm going to start off with my CBT Nuggets world, which is going to be that Flex VLAN. I'm going to go in here, add VLAN 50. That's my Flex VLAN. Actually, I'm not going to be able to do that in this order because it's going to have that duplicate IP address from there. So I'm going to yank the IP address from here. So let's first off go here. Oh, not going to do that. Clicked it. I'm going to screen cap this because I need a document that shows all the old IP addresses. Okay, so I've got that over on the side. Now I can safely delete this, and I don't even use that one. You can see the, the send and receive rates and history on there. I, I've transmitted 400 bytes and delete that guy. Don't need him. Add a VLAN interface will be VLAN 50. This is our Flex 1. Actually, I'm going to pull up our documentation and make sure I'm using the right name. Yep, this is just Flex. So uh, VLAN 50, we'll call it Flex 1 because we can have multiple flex VLANs, and this will attach to E3, so it'll become 3.50. I'll add an IP address, and this will be the 172.29.100.254. And again, I know that does not line up to the new scheme that we have right here. We're not changing IP addresses, we're just changing VLANs, and that's a slash 24. Apply, there we go. Flex one right there just appeared, it is created. All right, this guy is actually, I think, somebody's idea. They probably wanted to do some development at some point and never really used that. Um, VLAN 40 is supposed to be the old VLAN 4. So we want this subnet moved up to VLAN 40. So what I'm going to do, what am I going to do? What am I? I'm going to do this. I'm going to delete 
this guy, Imaging VLAN, is gone. Go to the Development VLAN. We'll rename that guy to Managed Devices. Actually, I'm going to follow the scheme I have right here, Managed Group 1, G1. And we're going to change that IP address to what was the VLAN 4, 10.16.7.254 slash 22, and apply. There we go. You might wonder, what is this random ordering? It orders alphabetically right here. It's kind of dumb. Maybe we can order by the type. Yeah, that's a little better. All right, voice over IP, you are the next to go. I'm going to delete you. And while I'm here, I might as well delete that public one. Again, 3 is becoming 30. Delete, confirm, add VLAN, 20. Attach it to Ethernet 3. And that'll be voice over IP, group 1. Add IP address. And that was the 10.5.1.254 slash 24, our old IP scheme. Apply. And there we go. Just showed up in the list. It's disconnected. It's sorted. And boom, it's active. One more. Add VLAN, VLAN 30. E3, guest, guest, add IP address, 172.17.3.254 slash 22. Apply. Showed up, disconnected, sorted, active. There we go. All right, we've got VLAN 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And you know what makes my heart warm? The fact that I'm already seeing traffic starting to go across these guys. It's not much because it is 11.30 in the evening. Nobody's here except me. Nothing's on Wi-Fi except me. So now I get to walk around the office and make sure everything works. And I'll tell you what, I'm not going to take you with me on that. Just because I'd have to set up GoPros and carry around and that would be a massive thing. I just want to make sure everything works and go home. You would feel that way too. So that being said, we have deployed... The VLAN configuration that we strategize on for the router, the switches, the wireless access points, and the voice over IP phone. Now we just need to check it all, make sure it's all looking good, and wrap up for the evening. So our mission is successful, and I know, I know that I know, and you probably know that I know, and you know that I know that I know, that when I walk around this office, I will see things that are wrong, and I will have to fidget with it and tinker with it. That's why I don't want to take a little GoPro around, because it's going to be stupid stuff. But I would guess that I probably have about another hour or so minimum before I am out of here because uh, there's always plenty of stupid stuff to find. That being said, this concludes our journey through a real-world VLAN implementation. So much more than you probably thought it was to do it the right way. Vast majority of the stuff, all in the planning, the design, the configuration, is just one evening. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for being here.